Bastinado. And I'm Amanda Hosel. And this is HGTV where we tell you what's up. We're gonna get into the calendar right away. So um, today is the 5th and it's Rachel Heisinga and Silas Klein Saucer's birthday. And Saturday the 6th, it's Andy Brooker's birthday, so happy birthday to them. And then on the 7th through the 9th, the FFA kids go to the state FFA convention in Brookings. And then Monday the 8th, Junior High Oral and Turp is at Florence. And there's a school board meeting at 7. And then on the 11th, there's supposed to be track at DeSmit. But I don't know if that will happen with the weather. And then Friday, the 12th, is prom. And enhancement. Don't forget about enhancement. And on the 13th, there's an ACT test available. So that's your calendar for the next week. We'll jump right into uh, sports with Kobe. This is Kobe Stoner with the Hitchcock Tuller TV Sports News. Today we'll be talking about the NCAA men's basketball and then the final four is Texas Tech, Virginia, Auburn, and Michigan State. Texas Tech beat Gonzaga 75 to 69. Virginia beat Purdue 80 to 75. Auburn beat, beat Kentucky 77 to 71. And Michigan State upset a Duke by 1 point 68 to 67. Now we have an interview with Mr. Barry. This is Kobe Stoner here with the track coach, Mr. Barry, and we got a few questions for him. How do you think this year's track team is going to do? Well, if we ever get outside, we'll find out. But we have a nice mixture of some returning ladder winners. We have some uh, young kids who are working hard. And so hopefully when we get a chance to get outside, I'm expecting a, you know big things from some of our kids because we have a couple kids that return from state track meet last year and we also have some kids that are really working hard so I I have a high expectations for our kids um, but um, the way the weather is hopefully it'll cooperate so we can actually get on the track next week. What are your expectations of this track season? Well every year we go into this, to the track season where we, our expectations are to get as many kids to the state track meet as we can and sometimes that's hard. We get moved around from region to region, but we've kind of stayed over in this. This is our second year in the new region, so we have an idea of, of different places where we can put kids. But, you know, I guess our goal is to always improve. Um, not everybody's going to make it to the state track meet, but we want, we want each kid to set their own goals and then, you know, work to achieve them as the season goes on. And every time we, every track meet, we say we just want to improve. And by the time we get to regions, we hope that we're to a point where we have the possibility of, of qualifying something for state. How many kids do you have out for track this year? Uh, I think right around 36 boys and girls, 7 through 12. I think there's probably about 14, uh, 14 girls, and so that would leave you know your other um, 22 boys, I think. So a nice mixture of kids, maybe not quite what we w would like to have, but um, those who are out are working hard. How do you think the 281 conference is going to go? You know, every school is kind of facing the same thing. Um, track is kind of a sport that there's so many things that it comes up against. And so a lot of your track teams fluctuate back and forth, you know, as far as numbers go. I haven't really had a chance to look to see who's all there. Um, but it'll be competitive, um, you know, in the boys' division. Uh, we have, like I said, a nice group of kids that have returned um, with some younger kids working hard. Um, our girls' numbers are a little down, so that could be, you know, a little harder. But we look to score points in our events that we're strongest in, and I guess I've never really been one that really worries about winning the conference. If it happens, it happens, um, especially in a year like this year. You're probably not going to try to throw all your, your kids into certain events because you need to take advantage of that track meet when you get it and uh, try to run your events as hard as you can instead of breaking relays and putting kids in individual events. So we're just hoping to, to improve and then maybe when the 281 conference comes around, if it's a nice day out, that's where you look to try to qualify things. All right, thank you, Mr. Barry. Back to you. Thank you, Kobe. Uh, now we're gonna jump into our um, senior spotlight. 
with either me or Amanda. We gotta find someone to be in it. So, over to them. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dawson Otto and I'm here with Danielle Wright for the Senior Spotlight. Hi, Danielle. Hi. Um, so how's your senior year going? Pretty good. Um, so where do you plan on going to college next year? I plan on going to Northern State University for college next year. And what are you going to do there? I plan on doing graphic design. Uh, Why did you pick graphic design? I picked graphic design because it looks like a lot of fun and I really do like doing artsy things. What is your favorite memory of high school? My favorite memory of high school is going to FCCLA trips and just hanging out with friends. And what is your advice to the younger classmen? Uh, cherish high school because high school really does go by real quick. Thank you, Danielle. Back to you. Thank you for that. Um, now we're going to jump into our interview with Christine Miklich, the Vice President of Public Relations of FCCLA. So, over to them. I'm Amanda Wilson. I'm with Christine Miklich. Hi, Christine. Hi. So you guys went to state conference earlier this week. Yep. So how was that? How did everyone do? Um, we had several students who received silver medal award, and they were Ashley in career investigation, Danielle in recycle redesign, myself in national programs in action, Dawson and Cassidy in entrepreneurship, Gabe in focus on children, Rachel, Carter, and Kylie in illustrated talk, Kaden and Andy in entrepreneurship, and then we had several students who earned a gold medal, and that was Jessica in Illustrated Talk, Presley and Cambry in Illustrated Talk, Brandon, Tyler, and Jackson in Illustrated Talk, Madison in Recycle and Redesign, Trajan in Recycle Redesign, Alex and Cullen in Life Event Planning, Caitlin and Katie in Life Event Planning, Kennedy and Sydney in Promote and Publicize, Bethany and Shandy in Chapter Service Project. And we have Kennedy and Sydney advancing on to Nationals with their Promote and Publicize. Okay, where is Nationals this year? Nationals is going to be in California. Well, congratulations to all the FCCLA members and good luck to Sydney and Kennedy at Nationals. So what did you do for like an everyday kind of thing at convention? We started off the day with general sessions and those involved different speakers and different things going on there. And then we had several different workshops that we participated in, and a college fair, and then we ended the day with more general sessions. And then on, su on Sunday and Monday, we presented our projects to judges. Fun. Uh, what was your favorite part about the convention? My favorite part was probably the um, workshops. There's a lot of different ones this year, and they were kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And why should uh, students join FCCLA? Um, I think students should join FCCLA because it's a very fun and unique experience that you won't get when you're out of high school, really. And it helps you um, get out of your comfort zone a lot and learn to speak in front of people. And yeah. Okay, back to you. Thank you for that interview. Um, I guess that's it for the week. And remember, be awesome, not average.